Are you looking for a comprehensive way to set up and use your first DocuSign template? Then this video is for you. We'll be building a template for our new employee onboarding forms, which includes a W-4 tax form in the US and a deposit authorization form so that an employee can also be paid. There are plenty of tricks to help you do this faster than most beginners do. And I've put together a free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet to help you remember all the steps. You can find the link in the description of this video, or you can go to this page to download it right now. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Sofian Saudi, and I'm the founder of Solution Consulting. Since 2019, we've helped hundreds of companies just like yours automate document related tasks in their onboarding and recruitment workflows. So we really understand how important it is to have effective templates, databases, and integrations. And that's exactly what we build for our clients. So if you don't have time to build your own templates yourself, you can contact us today for a quote by sending your documents to template at solisign.com. You can also opt in to visit this website to book a consultation with one of our consultants. Otherwise, just follow along this tutorial as we build a static template from scratch. The static template is one where the text of the document doesn't change. Whether you're sending it to Bob, Sam, Peter, it's always going to be the same document. But in the next video, I'll show you how to build a template for your dynamic documents. For example, this offer letter. This is a dynamic document because the text within the offer varies for each candidate. You don't need to worry about this for now, but you definitely want to check the next video out because it's important for you to know how to use both static and dynamic templates. Now we'll, we'll start by logging in inside of DocuSign and you preferably want to log in in Sandbox accounts so that you can uh, create and send your test run envelopes completely for free without wasting your paid envelopes. You can go to developers.docusign.com to sign up for a free developer account. Now I'm just going to go to my templates tab and I'm going to click on create a new template. From here, the first thing that I want to do is give a name to my template. So I'm going to call this onboarding form new employee and I can add a description if I want to. I'm going to skip this step and from here I'm going to upload the documents that I want to add to my template. So DocuSign doesn't allow you to build a document itself direct in the app. You need to have your documents already prepared. So I'm going to include my W4 as well as my direct deposit authorization form which I'm going to show you as soon as it's finished being uploaded. Now, this is what the deposit authorization form looks like. I just need the candidate to provide their name, address, as well as the bank details so that they can be paid. And the W4 is requesting for the same information in terms of the personal details, as well as a few other boring tax information. So go to my step number two, which is to add my recipients. Once I've uploaded my document, the next step is to add my recipients. And so my first recipient is going to be the new employee. Now the employee needs to sign. So I'm not going to change this option here, but we'll change it to the next recipient that we need to add. Why do we need to add another recipient? It's simply because payroll needs to receive a copy of that document once it's been completed by the employee so that they can set them up in the payroll system. So I'm going to click on add recipient again. And here I can just enter the word payroll for the role, but payroll doesn't need to sign. Payroll is going to receive a copy. So I'm going to change this action from needs to sign to receives a copy. Now, if I leave these uh, things the way they currently are, what's happening is that I'm sending my documents to the payroll and the new employee at the same time but I don't only want payroll to receive the document once they've been completed, which means we need to wait for the employee to be done with the completion before we send it to payroll. So that means we are going to set up a signing order. And as soon as I tick this box, you can see my employee is signing number one and my payroll is in position number two. If I had more recipients, I could just add another recipient in position three, or I could do a parallel signing order for my third and second recipient by just changing that number here, right? So here, if we had three recipients, we'd have new employee signing first, as well as my payroll and my other recipient that I haven't named yet signing in the same position. I mean, at least receiving a document in the same position. Let's delete that extra recipient that I don't need. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the name and email of the payroll person because I know who that person is. If I don't put those details in, each time I'm gonna use my template, I'm gonna have to provide the name and email, which I definitely don't want to do each time. The next thing I wanna do is to add a message or customize the message for my employee and the payroll. I can change the email subject if I want to. I'm going to change this to complete with DocuSign onboarding forms. And I'm going to also include the name of the employee so that when payroll looks at the email that they receive 
they can see whose employee they are about to they've received the building form from so that can be pretty handy otherwise the person who is opening who is receiving documents need to open the envelope the next thing i can do is to change the frequency of the reminders because DocuSign is going to send automated reminders to your recipient so the frequency reminder i can do it every day i can do it every two days whatever i can even do a custom and i can just turn off my reminders completely if i don't want to send reminders i can also do other things here which i'm not going to get into in this particular video because those are more advanced options and from here i'm going to click next from here this is the most important part i need to add my fields to my document and actually i've got this pop-up message which tells me hey we can already see there are fields now if you ever see that message that i'm seeing here it's because the actual w4 has fillable fields and docusign is picking those up and wants to help you by recreating those fields inside of docusign itself so that you don't have to create them i absolutely hate doing this because your fields are never positioned correctly it's never the right field it doesn't do a great job so always delete it as my recommendation at least now on this page though what we need to do is to add the recipient field so that our employee can fill out and enter the information so what i'm going to do is just drag and drop fields from the left and you can see that uh, if i had multiple recipients here i could select who the recipient was and then i could drag a field for recipient one or for recipient two i've only got one signing recipient here so i've only got the new employee but that's good for you to know so now i'm going to drag and drop the name field this means that the candidate's name will be automatically pre-filled here the candidate doesn't need to enter their name and this is the name will be pulled from the name that you as the sender enter in the template when you use the template and you send it to Bob Smith Bob won't need to enter their name now for the address I'm gonna drag and drop a text field and I don't like my fields to overlap so I'm just going to narrow them a little bit and I can also increase the width which doesn't really matter because the width will expand by itself and here I'm going to call this street address one and the reason I'm, I'm clicking on this label is because my employee will have to enter the same information twice in multiple forms and i don't want to force them to do that and as you can see here if i go to my w4 here i have the same field for the address i don't want them to have to do this twice so what i did i copied with my command c and i'm going to paste this here with right click or command v that's going to duplicate the field and if i go to data label as soon as i duplicate my field i've got some random numbers and letters that appear after the label that i've just created in the first field if i delete all of that stuff then you can see it says entries populate automatically across these two fields which means that if I enter something in here then it will appear here which is fantastic because people don't like to provide their information multiple times I'm gonna do the same thing for my city and for my zip you'll understand why I'm not doing it for the state I'm gonna click on this field here I'm gonna show you a few tricks those few tricks right to build your templates much more efficiently I'm gonna do a command D for duplicate which copies the field that I've just selected, create a duplicate, and I'm gonna change this to city. And now that I've renamed this, I'm gonna do a command C to copy this field, and I'm gonna paste it here because my city is also required in my W4. And you guessed it, I'm gonna get rid of all that clutter, and now it says that my uh, data populates across those two fields. Let me do the same thing for my zip code. Now for my zip, I'm going to add a validation, a zip validation, which means that if the candidate is not entering a zip, then the DocuSign will not let them finish. So I'm going to do the same thing and copy the zip code. I'm going to do the same thing in the next form. And so I don't need my zip to be that big. So I'm just going to narrow down the width and I'm also going to remove this, of course. Now, the next thing I want to do is my state. So for the list of states, what you can do is to create a custom field. Actually, let's start from the beginning. For the states, you want to use a drop down list because you already know what states your candidates can choose from. And so here you drag and drop your state field. Of course, you call this state in your label, and then you can click on edit values to add your different states. So we can go with, you know, California, Florida, your all of these states, and then you click on save once you've added all your states. You can do a quick Google search and add them by copy pasting the list of states separated by semicolons directly here and then DocuSign will split them into different fields which is nice but I don't want to have because I know that I'm going to use my state field in other forms in the future I don't want to have to do this again so I'm going to click on save as custom field and then I'm going to click rename this if I want to and then click on save and that's going to appear here in my list of custom fields instead of my standard fields list but I've already got a state field as you can probably imagine after having after our team has you know we're just building like hundreds of templates all the time so I'm just going to tool my state saved custom field and I've got all my state 
dovetails here. But as you can see, my formatting is a bit off. So I'm going to look at how this is formatted and copy the same property. So this is a size nine and it required. So I'm going to go size nine and I'm going to say that I want this to be required as well. Now, what is required means? As you can see, if I'm selecting required or unselecting it, that becomes yellow or white. If it's required, the candidate will have to fill out the field. Otherwise, they won't be able to finish the envelope. But if this was left blank, the candidate or the recipient can choose to um, enter some values in the field, but they don't have to. Of course, I do want all this information because all of this information is important. Now that I've got my state field that's uh, set up here, I'm going to paste it here as well. And of course, I'm going to remove all of these things. And here, I think that I'm already done. I want the name of the bank. I'm just going to grab a text field. And I don't need to rename that field because that field doesn't need to copy over across. I'm going to duplicate so that I've got my account number as well. And then here I have my nine digit routing number. And so here, for example, I could select those and add a validation. And I can tell DocuSign, hey, only accept numbers in these fields because I know that my account numbers and my routing numbers are going to be numbers. Uh, for the amount field, I can also drag and drop text field, and I can also choose a numbers. Here for the type of account, the candidate has to make a choice between checks, checking or savings. So I'm going to click on the radio button, and I have my two options here. There you go. Finally, the candidate needs to sign. I'm going to drag and drop a signature field. The date will populate automatically based on the time and date the candidate fills out the form. Now here, I just need to uh, complete my W4 by adding a first name and last name and drag and drop a full name, change this to a first name, and I'm going to, to copy this and change this to a last name. And for my middle initial, I'm just going to add a text field and I'm gonna say that I only want character. I'm not going to make this field uh, required because some people don't have a middle name. I don't have a middle name, even if that's uh, crazy to you based on wherever you are in the world watching. So I think this is now looking good. I'm going to add a few more fields here and then I'll show you how I'm gonna use a template. I think you're getting the idea. So I'm not going to finish this one, otherwise it will be a very long tutorial, but I'm now going to click on save and close and show you how to use the templates. So now that my my template has been created it appears in my templates list you can see it's here but I might want to share it with other users of my account so I can either click on share with users and select who I want to share it with or I can just put it in a shared folder right and then anyone within my organization that has access to the shared folder will be able to find that template in the shared folder right here but for me to use this template I'm simply going to click on use and then I have to provide the name and email of my uh, new candidate. I'm going to select myself. Let's just say that I'm the new candidate and then I'm going to click on send. And that's it. It only took me, I think one or two clicks to send my templates. It was super fast. Instead of having to create your envelopes each time you're sending a document to your recipients. Now, if you want to learn more about how DocuSign works, I strongly recommend you download the cheat sheet so that you don't have to remember all the steps. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to build your document templates for dynamic documents, such as an offer letter to help you automate more of your onboarding process and recruitment process. Also, if you're looking for more help with DocuSign, you can set up a consultation with one of our consultants using the link in the description. I will see you in the next one. Ciao.